Sometimes we get so mad at our opponents, just like right here, that lobbing all the time. They are really targeting Lee Waters with those lobs. It's the third time, oh. and she oh. is not happy about it. Oh, she's not happy. Wow. It. I have never in my life seen somebody mad about using this, the elements. Oh, that is awesome. Yana Grish, Keen is getting the crowd into it. Love this action. They have rattled that that was... Lee Waters, and Annalise says we are taking a timeout. It ain't all. It's like your opponents don't want you to have a good day, like that stealing your happiness. It's not fair, right? It's not fair that you practice so hard dinking and speeding it up and playing the game right, and it's not fair that that driving the ball crazy and shaking, begging like tennis players, because it's not fair. Just like the spin serve that was banned, it wasn't fair. It made the points way too short. It was almost impossible to see which direction it was spinning from a really good spin server. And the spin serve is a problem, right? It's so annoying because you practice dinking, you practice third shot drops, and then you go into a tournament and you don't get to use any of that. Like if that's serving really hard with a traditional serve and that's somewhat going above waist it doesn't get caught so what can you do to get better because that's the point of the segment life is not fair your opponents will not take it easy on you they're gonna hit lobs and you have to be like joel in this example joel's gonna be amazing in the pro division he handles this lob so well and he surprises his opponent after they surprise him with a lob by coming into the kitchen being dynamic and he is so good and i wish i had his game i do i really do sometimes it's too many third shot lobs right and sometimes it's just being iced in a tournament. They're not going at you and it's so frustrated and they're constantly speeding it up on your opponent and you're being iced and it's so annoying. So how do you take that annoying energy, that negative energy and make it positive? Because not many people can do that and the people that can do that are extremely good at tournaments, extremely good. And let's face it, tournaments are really long. We might not be in the best shape, right, in the sun for four or five hours. So how do we make the point shorter? Because we have to think about it this way too, right? Ah. That's me in the bottom left hand ah. corner. I've made a career getting some pro wins, not a lot by being unorthodox, right? Because I don't have the best thinking. I'm trying to get I really want to play pro. I really do. But by poaching, I can stay dynamic, surprise my opponents, create upsets, which I did in the PPA pro qualifier two weeks ago, and I got a pro win. And I can't dink like a pro. One thing we can agree on is getting frustrated and people screaming and yelling at you doesn't help. I scream and yell at people all the time. It doesn't help. They get nervous and it just causes more confusion. It really does. So let's not do it just for today. Don't do this. this is Match Point from Mix Pro two weeks ago at Pictona in the PPA tournament. I watched the whole match. Both teams changed strategies throughout the match. Let's put this point in slow motion once Edward gets his pro win. Now, why is the team in the near court stacking? Well, first of all, they want the male on the forehand middle side because he's tall. He can cover more of the court. He really hurt Edward in the first game by Ernie and right? So they're playing more middle. So if someone's really hurting you with Ernie's, play middle more. It's a pickleball court, right? It's not tennis. You don't have to hit these crazy angles. And you can play middle like Edward's doing. He does it so well. So when you're panicking, you're down 8-2, change strategy. There's always another play you can call and another strategy you can deploy. Don't give up. Think about it. You've practiced so much. You can do it. I'm here. Let's go right now. It's as simple as that. If you lose a couple points in a tournament and you get frustrated, call a timeout. You get two a game. You really do. Most amateurs, they don't realize this. And they let that gold medal just slip away just like that because they don't have patience and they have self-defeating thoughts and actions. Yes, you do. Just like me. So we feel ourselves getting frustrated. We call a timeout right then. We talk to a partner. What do we talk about? This is about defeating our negative thoughts today. It's about being strong 
fighting for every single point. If you have a bad shot, it's not a big deal. And a great tip, I tell all my students, in a timeout, when you're talking about strategy, the best question to ask is, what is one thing they are doing that is causing us to lose? What is causing us to lose points? And how do we stop it? Once you recognize that one thing, we can win. Keep it simple, one. Not two, not three, one. Keep it simple. We don't have much time. This could be over soon. For example, if your partner is playing that forehand middle side and they're getting targeted really bad, stack. That's one thing you can do to change momentum. If your partner is faster than you and the other team's lobbing a lot, tell your partner to take those balls if you can't hit the overhead every single time. This simplifies the communication channels and leaves less room to um, misconstrue what the other person is saying. I was divorced, went through marriage counseling. I understand communication is important. I don't really understand how to communicate. I'm trying to explain it to you right now. And to get back on the point on fairness, what is unfair that they're doing to you? Because if it's unfair, they're probably winning, right? that probably winning. So how do we make it fair? Well, if that bangers and really want to hit it hard all the time and don't want to dink, what do we do? How about we just block that volley back in the kitchen? We make them do something they don't want to do to make it fair. <laughs> and on the other hand, if we're a little out of shape at a tournament, how about we speed it up a little more, dink a little less, keep the points a little shorter so we can win. And that's what I want to do. And I want to do it right now. Another really important tip is if the people seem way quicker than you, they probably are. So you're hitting way too many out balls. So tell your partner to stop hitting out balls. We're losing because you're hitting too many out balls and it's not fair. Maybe we're just getting beat really bad because we're going to the better player on the other team, right? Because usually that is a significantly better player in pickleball. That always is. And you have to recognize this and you have to recognize this in the warmups. You really do. Look, your partner may be falling apart inside, right? Fight or flight. He might be flying, so we have to make him fight. We have to give him confidence. We have to let them know, regardless, we're playing in the next tournament with them. If we lose, we're going to come back in the loser's bracket and still win. Give them courage to fight, because if they're paying $150 for tournament fees, I guarantee you, pickleball is a lot more important than just pickleball, right? That's a reason people need motivation to wake up to do things in life. And that's pickleball. That's the channel we have. So we do it right now. Pickleball lovers, this was another really good video. If you're home on a Sunday and you're really bored and you really don't have any other friends and you want to listen to me more, um, I don't know why. <laughs> this was a really good video and I'm just trying to make you click. And I hope you don't forget to have a good day. Leave some comments. How do you make the game more fair? I'm Joey. I may love pickleball just as much as you do. I know it's tough to believe, but I assure you it's true.